This is about my skill at creating the best possible outcome in any situation I face. And guys, that's living. So yesterday we, we wrapped on E plus R equals O, and I told you I was gonna introduce you to response quality. So the core of E plus R equals O, and again, I've been using this for 20 years, more than 20 years, and the value of E plus R equals O is its ability to give you a system to deal with any particular moment in life. Again, whether it's a bad call from an ump or a good call. Most people think of E plus R equals O in two lower value ways, and I wanna give you higher value ways. Most people think of E plus R equals O first as a way to deal with adversity. And they keep it limited to, oh, this is how I deal with bad stuff. And that's a, that's a, it's, not a, it's not a bad way to do it, it's just low value. This is how to deal with everything. Don't wait for adversity, this is how to deal with everything. Number two is people think of E plus R equals O as left to right. They wait for an event to use it. And again, some of life will be that way, but I think maybe five or 10% of life is waiting for the event to happen, then that triggering. The best way to use E plus R equals O is to literally do this order I shared yesterday. And that is wake up and say, what am I going after? That goes back to the time use piece, right? It's what am I going after? Not what am I waiting to deal with today? Cause that's a reactionary way of living. That's letting life and the game and in all of this dictate to us. I'm default aggressive. I understand that I'm default aggressive, but I'm not waiting for life to give me events that I can try to respond to. I'm chasing shit down. And then I'm just dealing with the E of life as my playing field. That's how I see it. I think it's the best way to go about this. The process we're trying to go through is what outcome do I want? What situation am I dealing with? How am I gonna respond? The more skillful and faster you can go through that process, the more you can deal with and the better you're gonna be. And I like to think of it this way from a sports perspective. Whoever does that better and faster has a much higher percentage chance of winning that particular matchup and winning that game. You just think about it just from, from a pure baseball perspective. If you can do that better more often and faster than most of the people that you play, you're gonna be a better player than the guy you're going against. You're gonna be a better team than the teams you're going against. Let's say you have really top end talent. Does that become more or less important? How, how skillful and how, how frequent and how fast you do that? More or less important if you have really top end talent? It gets more important. Because your ability to maximize your talent is contingent on doing that. You ever seen somebody who had lots of talent but was real poor at that? Now if you have less talent, does that become more or less important? So whether you got more talent or less talent, it's more important in both scenarios. Talent will not neutralize this. So here's what response quality is. It's the speed and the skill of your response to create the best possible outcome in any scenario. And I want you just to process that for just one second, right? IQ is intelligence. And then if you've ever heard of EQ, right, that's the emotional intelligence. And what I wanna do is I wanna get past this intelligence and past this emotion because sometimes people get all in their mind and they get all in their feelings and they forget that this life is about action. It's who can do it better. It's not about who feels better. It's about who does better. If your feelings are serving you, then yeah, use them. But at least half of life, we gotta do things that we don't feel. So I wanna make sure we're focused on action. This is about the speed and skill of your response to create, what's that say right there? Make sure we say this, right? It's to create the what? The best outcome in what? Any situation. This is not about getting what we want. This is not about always achieving the exact outcome we've aimed for. This is about my skill at creating the best possible outcome in any situation I face. And guys, that's living. That's competing. Sometimes the best outcome is still gonna be a shitty one, yes? It's just what? Sometimes we gotta produce a shitty outcome to avoid a disastrous one. Sometimes though, if I can respond faster, I might be able to avoid the shitty outcome and create a neutral outcome. Or from a neutral one to a all right one. Or from an all right one to a great one. So here's what the combo looks like. It's E plus R equals O speed by E plus R equals O skill is ultimately what creates my response quality. Life is really hard on people with low response qualities. Life's pretty good to people who can do that pretty well. I think of it this way, I was talking to a, uh, I told you guys yesterday I got a buddy on SEAL Team 6. We were talking, he said, in my world it's this. He goes, in my world, he goes, I'm not the best shot. I know I'm faster than you. 
And so if we get into a room together, I'm getting five shots off before you get one off. My biggest value isn't my skill. My biggest value is what? He's like, I am in, I am acting, and I am aggressive. I don't have to be better than you. I'm faster than you, and I've already neutralized you before you got a chance to deploy your skills. And so how often in life have you realized what to do, but you realized it what? Too, too slow or too late? When your skill is low and you're still slow, you're in the developing learner phase. Is there anything wrong with being in that phase? No. We're all in that, we're all in that section right here somewhere in life, all of us. We're all here somewhere. When your skill starts to increase, but we can't operate at game speed or life speed, we turn into this thoughtful operator. I know what to do, I know how to do it, but what? As soon as the speed of the environment increases, I break down a little bit. Anybody learn how to drive on a stick shift? Early on, how'd we do it, right? Like the first time, slow, parking lot, wherever it was, dirt road, and then what? You got dangerous enough to do it, but what? You ever, you ever get with a stick shift in your driving experience where you got into an environment that was a little bit ahead of your skill level with a stick shift? <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, and you realized in the moment, oh shit, I'm, I'm not at that, <laughs> right? Some of you, some of you defaulted to here in the stick shift <laughs> and they had to pull you out of the ditch, <laughs> right? Look, the thoughtful operator is the spot where it's like, look, we kind of get bogged down. In, in uh, Navy pilots, here's what they call it. They call it O-B-E. I love this because it fits with our language. Overcome by events. What they do with Navy pilots in training as they're moving them out of this stage is they put them in a simulator and they have all the variables that they can do with pilots, right? And what they do is they just keep adding new events and new things, right? They, they add one MIG with guns and then with missiles and then two MIGs and then with rain and then in the mountains and then with an engine failure. And what they do is they just keep stacking the events on and they, they increase the speed until what? Until that pilot can no longer execute in that environment and they crash or get killed. And what they do is they find out where what? They find out where that person's line is where they get overcome by events. And then they train from that point forward. And what they do is they find out at what, at what moment of the training do we what? Do we lose our skill or do we lose our speed and ability to operate in that environment? And then they train from that moment forward. So they're constantly training skill and speed, skill and speed, skill and speed. And they just increase the volume and speed of stuff until it knocks them down. They find out where that line is. Second piece is this. If you're low skill, but you're not slow and you're fast, we don't know what we're doing, but we're default aggressive and we go, well, now we're the aggressive competitor. We're going real fast, but we're going to make a lot more mistakes and we're going to move forward. Uh, and you know, it, it may or may not cost us, but that's just where our default is. Are there some things that are better to learn by moving from here up? Are there some things that are just, it's better to go up there to learn it than it is to over here? For sure. Are there other things that they're better to learn by doing it this way than by going that way? For sure. It's just know where we are and know what's going on. And then the last one where we want to operate as much as possible is we want to be in that elite performer zone. We want to be fast and we want to be skillful. And understand what I mean by speed here when I say fast. I'm not talking about just acting fast. I'm talking about processing fast. I'm talking about understanding how quickly can you get the right thing to do into your head and start moving it into action. Sometimes is the best thing to do to just be quiet and listen. Is that sometimes the best thing to do? Have you ever realized that too slow and too late? Here's the point. I'm talking about how fast can you recognize you should be quiet and listen, and can you do it? That's what it is. It's how quickly can you be quiet and listen? Or how quickly can you realize we need to speak up and go? So it's not just speed of action, it's speed of thought, speed of processing, okay? Questions on this piece here. We'll take a break and come back to this, but questions on balancing this speed and skill with E plus R equals O. Yeah. I think in baseball, um, the higher level you go, the speed is like enormous. Yep. So we're taught to slow, Mm -hmm. that's, that's such a phrase in American sports in particular uh, is, you know, for the elite performers in every sport, right? And, or frankly, even not even sports, everything, right? They say, oh, you know, the game slows down or, or it slows down. The reality, though, is the game doesn't slow down. The game actually speeds up. Yeah. 
the game goes much faster, you execute much smoother, like it's, it's way faster. Where does it actually slow down? That's where we're trying to do it. It's slow, and it doesn't even slow down in your mind, it actually speeds up in your mind. Have you noticed this? It's like counterintuitive how we say it. Can you process more information better with more skill in what? That's what we're trying to do. Between this pitch and the next pitch, how much information goes through your head? How clear is that information? How skillful have you thought? And how quickly can you access a high skill response? Like you put me in the batter's box, I'm completely overwhelmed. Like in, in any baseball, not even this, like at any level, I'm completely overwhelmed because I don't have the skill, I don't have the processing speed. Like I just, I'd be off the chart on the bottom, right? But you put me on a football field and like that was always, my, I, I saw more, process more, move faster, I was there earlier. Because for me, I process way more in way less time. And that's what happens for me now. Like, it's way short. And we'll talk about how to do it, but it's understanding this. It doesn't actually slow down. The trick is this, it looks like it slows down to everybody else. Like, oh, like, but you're moving faster than everybody else as well. And they see that. That's what that means is when it slows down, is you probably, and it feels like that a little bit, but then you go out and it, you know, it's obviously super high levels of execution, super high.